this movie also uh, the other user has ranked it uh, and maybe here there is a ranking uh, of U2 of a movie K but here it is the, the other user hasn't seen it so you will isolate the subset of movies uh, that both users have ranked now you define this distance between them as the um, cosine oops as the cosine of the angle between vectors rho one and rho two. Right? So essentially, when is the cosine of an angle large? When is the cosine of an angle uh, large? What is the cosine? The cosine is just the length. If we normalize them to one, it's just the length of the projection. So if the angle is small, the cosine will be a large positive number. If this angle is close to pi over 2, the cosine will be close to 0. But you can have also a situation when the vectors are like that, in which the cosine uh, will be negative. Right? So what would this mean? Uh, this would mean that this user mostly likes movies that the other person dislikes. While here, these two users have the same preferences because their vectors point in the same direction. So you see, this makes sense. This makes sense because we remove the biases, the, the kind of absolute value of the numbers that users uh, assign to movies and the values that you, you movies get, uh, right? Because we remove these two biases, then what is left, uh, right? What is left really represents the taste pe peculiar to that user, right? And then you can compare these two users just by looking whether their vectors point into the same direction, whether they are orthogonal, which would mean that movies, what would mean if the vectors are orthogonal? That whether this person likes or dislikes a movie has no impact on these guys, so they are uncorrelated. Well, if it's like this, then uh, their tastes are opposite. The movies that I like, if I like a movie, it's all in you know, all likelihood the other person will dislike it, and vice versa. So how do we define this then? This is simply the dot product row one dot uh, row two divided by the norm of row one times norm of row two, right? Which is simply a shorthand for the sum <coughs> over all i's such that u1 uh, rated movie i and u2 also rated movie i and then here is R uh, U1i times uh, R U2i divided by square root of R U1i squared, uh, sorry, forgot the sum, divided by the uh, square over exactly the same sum, let me write it like this, 
and then here would be r u1 i squared times square root of the sum uh, r u2 i squared. Uh, right? These are Euclidean. These are ju this is just the length of the vector, and this uh, right, and this is their scalar product. So we don't even care whether the lengths of two vectors are similar, but whether they point in the same direction. Because you are not interested if one of the users gave higher scores to the movies than the other, but just whether relative to other movies, whether the two vectors point in the same direction. Okay. So what do we have now? Are you with me? Do you, yes? So if the only the angle matters, so what is the scale that has any meaning in such a case? Um, so the, this would then be, again, kind of a bias, meaning among the movies that we both saw, I rank them slightly, say, I rank them higher than what you the marks that you gave them. But we are not interested in absolute rating. We are interested if, for the similar kind of movies, we give similar marks relative to what we give. So this is yet another, so to speak, local debiasing. Removing the sizes of the marks. Because I don't care, you see, for example, if uh, I give, uh, um, say, uh, to, uh, to movie, say, uh, one star, two stars, and three stars, uh, and uh, another person gives uh, two stars, three stars, uh, four stars, uh, right? It looks that one person liked it more but we don't really care about that. We just, relative to all movies, uh, whether they like in a similar way, right? Uh, so this is why we divide with the norms uh, to kind of add another layer of debiasing. So if there's two pairs that are very similar, then we can't use this uh, rating directly. We have to apply a constant or so we say it again. So if that two pairs in the uh, uh, similarity are very close, mm -hmm. we can't apply a yeah, heat rating. Uh, no. We have to apply, uh, no. multiply by exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So this is just the degree of similarity, but now we have to put back the size. Very good. Uh, so uh, we cannot just base the decision on the angle to produce the ratings because the magnitudes have been removed, just the correlations. Now, what can we do with uh, uh, this uh, distance measure? Because if two of us 
have diametrically opposite paths. The, then if I love the movie, in all likelihood, you will dislike it. That, for example, holds true between my wife and myself. Right? So we can only choose uh, who is going to be tortured when we watch the movie, and I'll let you guess who ends up being tortured. <laughs> so, um, um, so now what we can do, say you want to recommend a movie to user uh, U. Okay? Here is user U. Right. Now, among all, here you have this distance that gives you similarity or dissimilarity of the tastes. Right. So what the system does, it chooses say k many when k is in the order of tens. So k many largest values and k many smallest values in the sense that uh, uh, so choose uh, k many and k is uh, of the order of say 10 or 20, depends on the particulars of the system. K may be uh, largest positive users, uh, well, largest positive uh, distances, and K many, let me put it this way, most negative. Uh, Uh, distances, right? So you take certain small, smallish number of users that are most similar to you, and certain maybe it doesn't even have to be the same k one. These are now tweaks that you know how big should be k one, how big should be k two. You. Uh, you kind of learn from the data set, and I'll explain to you how we do that just in a moment. But you can see there will be parameters <coughs> involved, right? Then what you can do now, it's your point, we have to return the magnitudes. So we go. Uh, pro, uh, so predicted uh, you um, uh, predicted uh, R U I so because here I corresponds um, U has not seen uh, movie I, but you do it as uh, follows. Uh, you take, um, let me not mess it up, just one second. You take um, the sum. So you will take um, R bar, which is the mean of all movies, right? Plus uh, plus. Let me see. Let me know. Let's start. You have to. Uh, so yeah, you have. Okay, so uh, you take uh, plus the bias of user u that we previously subtracted plus the bias of the movie i. So this is non-informative part. 
which we now simply compensate for uh, the fact that here we subtract them. So now we return them back. So we subtract them to get these guys, but they do figure out in the actual score, right? But are uninformative. And then plus the sum of D I, um, let's see, D uh, U uh, U K uh, times Times, um, times the rating R uh, tilde that user UK gave to the movie I divided by, so this will be over all users UK uh, from the from the set that we chose, uh, right? We said we chose some that are highly correlated and some that are un anti correlated. So, UK's, uh, uh, let's say this uh, set was uh, set uh, whatever B. So, B is uh, the set of uh, K1 top correlated users and uh, K2 anti-correlated <coughs> users. So, so here UK will belong to this set B divided by, we have to normalize the sum of absolute values of D of UK over UK belongs to B. So now, now we are, so this tells you how correlated the taste of U is to the user UK. Yeah? So more correlated, larger will be uh, the impact of his unbiased ratings, right? And if it's negative, then the this rating, so you see, if this is negative correlated and this is negative, it will give positive value. If this is negative, this is positive, it will be it will subtract, right? <coughs> because it's pointing in the opposite direction. And this is the predicted value. And you simply pick up <coughs> from all available uh, uh, available users you simply sorry for all available movies that the person hasn't seen you simply pick up one with where this score is the largest now notice <coughs> this predicted value can be done offline no? so you can do every so often just like page rank you can you start with a sparsely populated matrix. You fill the entire matrix, right? And then when you have to uh, uh, choose the movie for user I, you just look for the largest scores and you pick some, 10 of them or so. And then as the users keep ranking more movies, maybe once a month, uh, you can recalculate uh, the, the matrix, the prediction matrix from, uh, from scratch, right? Is it clear how this works? Uh, look, if you go out, and this can be tweaked in a gazillion of ways. First of all, how many top movies should you, uh, sorry, Top correlated that users should you take? Yes. Uh, so different question. So what you asked? 
do you ever reintroduce D U1 U2? Just because like if you've got a really short vector, maybe the main have only one movie, they've only got a one movie overlap, then they could very easily have a hundred percent correlation and that rating would be possibly too heavy. So do you introduce the length of the domain? That's a very good question. question. <coughs> the answer to this is you give it a try. What so so the question is this. Assume that you have users uh, that are uh, that uh, whose uh, intersection is a single movie and they both give him four stars. Does it mean that this guy is the maximally, you know, like should figure here with the coefficient one? Well, if it's only one movie, it is hard to make a conclusion. So one can bias, one can prorate this distance by the number, by the size of, of, in, of the domain when they intersect. But again, how do you prorate with the size? Um, um, Sorry, you, 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 you multiply it by a, a factor that grows with respect of the size of the, of the domain. Um, if they saw both um, a very large number of movies in common, even if they are not very correlated, right? Uh, this prorated distance can be large, or can be the kind of proximity can be large. So for this reason, you don't prorate it with the size of the domain, but with a function, logistic function that can you can take arcus cotang, arcus tan, arc tan, right? You take something that looks like this, and you have of course, look only at the positive part because it's counting how many movies they saw together. So it will be small, it's almost linear for small values, but then if it's large, right, if, it's, uh, if the number of movies is large, you don't get excessively large weights. But this is definitely a design feature. Do you have to prorate this uh, to take into account the size of the domain because this gives you different confidence. And how do you prorate it? Maybe it's, uh, as, as I said, it's usually it's a monotonically increasing but tapper the kind of function of the size of the domain. Um, so how, do, so you can see which function is the best because Right, arcus tangus is, uh, um, <coughs> uh, you have to take into account, the, so arc tan, and then the value, but the value, if the value is large, everyone, right, even in the arc tan 10, for example, so you have to, uh, the, the x divided by some factor, maybe a thousand or a hundred, uh, to kind of, so that, uh, you do make a difference for say up to 50 movies uh, and this is controlled by this, let's call this factor alpha. How big should be alpha? This is how this is done and how it was done for Netflix, Netflix uh, challenge. You do the following. You take your original matrix, uh, okay, and it's pretty large. It's, uh, 450,000 by 17 something, maybe uh, 500, right? And about 1% is filled. What you do then, you blank out a certain portion of the points where the data is filled. Then you apply the recommender system to guess these values, and then you compute the RMS value of the error. And then 
you choose, you change the parameters, and you change the which data set you blank out so that you don't tune only on particular uh, subset, right? To avoid overfitting, right? So you keep changing the subset and you keep changing parameters, minimizing the error between known values and predicted values. Uh, so this is kind of machine learning, right? Because you're trying to deduce the values of the parameters that minimize this. So geometrically, what are we doing? Uh, geometrically, we, are, we look at a user, right? And then we look at a collection of other users that have either very similar tastes or very dissimilar tastes. Then you pick a movie that you want to compute the predicted value by this guy. You pick the movie, and then you find the subset among these guys who have seen that movie. And then you predict the value that this user would give by forming a weighted average of the measure of similarity times the debiased rank that these guys produced. Right? You could have done the other way around too. How would the other way around work? Instead of looking at similarity of users, you can look at the similarity of movies. Right? And then you do the following. You have a user U. Right again, this is your user U. And you want to recommend him a movie. Right? Well, you look for, you simply scan through all movies, and for each movie, you look at similar movies to that movie with exactly the same similarity measurement, except that the role of users and movies is reversed, right? <coughs> so you find, here we look for similar users. Here we will look for similar movies. Out of all similar movies, you will find the subset of those movies that this user has seen and then predict the value for this movie again by applying coefficients this sign of similarity between the movies right versus the he, times the ranking that he gave to these movies to predict the similarity the, the rank here and if you get these two systems then you might as well find a weighted average between the two and then you can come up with other recommender systems. And lo and behold, as I mentioned in the Netflix challenge, the two most successful uh, algorithms were concoction of more than 100 recommender methods, each in which the final prediction was a weighted sum of the predicted values by each method with weights obtained by trial and error through learning exactly this by going through blanking out different subsets, doing a prediction, computing RMS, and looking for optimal values of the parameters. So <coughs> okay, so this is, yes? Do you use a metric to talk about how similar movies are to each other? That yes. So how would you define metrics for how similar movies are? You will form precisely, you remove the biases just as before. But now, instead of 
uh, where is it? Instead of doing this, right? So let's uh, detail uh, how you do the similarity between movies. Uh, similarity between movies is just uh, the, uh, completely analogous. So let's see how. So you have all the de-biased ratings, right? Now you want to see similarity between the movies. What do you do? If you have a movie I and the movie J, yeah? then consider all users uh, who have seen uh, uh, who have seen both I and J. Right? So now, uh, right, you can form uh, the vector row of one, which is the set of rankings of uh, uh, UI, right, such that uh, U has seen I and U has seen uh, J, right, and uh, a vector row 2, which is ranks UJ, such that U has seen J, and uh, uh, U, oops, and U has, uh, sorry, sorry, what am I doing here? Uh, are all the movies so that uh, all the users such that user U has seen I and user seen J. Uh, let me see, what am I doing here? I want to compare the ratings of the uh, movie I and movie J. Okay, so row two vector is all the ranks that you gave to J. And again here the same. And now I can form this between row one uh, and uh, I can call it actually row I and uh, row J. So this one's between row I and row J is again the cosine of the angle between uh, row I and row J, which is equal to the sum of R U I times R U J, such that uh, you have seen over all U's such that you seen I and you seen J, right? Divided by the square root, and then here the same sum of R U I squared times square root of R U J squared. So it's exactly the same trick, right? Right, if you simply see whether each user that has seen both movies, how closely he rated uh, you compared to J, uh, how, he, how he rated I movie versus how he rated uh, J movie. Right, so here the vectors uh, row I and row J are over users, right, um, rather than movies that we had, uh, that we had uh, uh, here, right? So here it is uh, over all eyes, uh, so that both you one and you two have seen I movie. Here it's the other way around. It is all 
users rather than movies, all the users who have seen both movie I and both movie J. And then you can define prediction uh, are uh, predicted precisely of U I phase simply to be uh, the mean uh, plus bias U plus bias I plus and then sum of all these distances between movies I and J, right? Divided by here, it will be sum of absolute values of the same uh, distances. And here will be R tilde of uh, uh, user, um, so uh, uh, of user U seeing movie J, right? So you simply have form a weighted average of uh, the score that user U gave to movie J times how close is movie J to movie I. Right? So this will give you a prediction. And then final prediction, you might want to make a weighted sum of the two with uh, the, the values of the parameters uh, found through uh, this learning process in which you uh, block certain of the known values, use the remainder to predict these known values, and then compute the RMS of the error um, of the prediction. Look, this is a little bit of math. It's beautifully explained in the textbook. Um, so I urge you to also read the textbook. Uh, so what we have, you don't have time. It's, uh, you don't want to start now because uh, uh, what we have to see do next time is this. Tiny little bit about general theory of least squares because they are absolutely ubiquitous. Uh, it's, uh, bread and butter for many things. And then we will do another different type, uh, an arguably cleverer type of uh, recommendation. Because notice here, what we leverage is pairwise similarities, uh, rather than global similarities. Uh, we kind of reduced the amount of information simply by comparing things only in pairs, each row 